Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Living in the Limelight, an Anton Scholl and Friends podcast where we discuss music from the artist and fan perspective. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of Living in the Limelight. I am your host, Anton Scholl, and with me today is my special guest, Carmen Garza. How are you today? Hey, Anton. I'm wonderful. How about yourself? Good, good. Thank you. I, I, I've been looking forward to this because I want to just let everybody know that the the podcast itself is something that I put together to kind of get perspectives from musicians and a perspective from uh, the the fan. And you've been a fan of music for a long time, so you have that perspective. But now you're starting to branch out and go into creating your own band. And that kind of gives both perspectives. So we yeah. have a lot to talk about. So are you ready <laughs> to get going? I am ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. So first, let's talk about in general, uh, before you became a photographer, before you uh, started writing reviews, before you started doing anything with music at all, do you remember when you started enjoying music? What what band or what what singer out there hit you to like, oh, I love music? Yes. Uh, oh, man. I've always loved music. Uh, everybody in my family know, knows that. Everyone, all my friends knew that. Probably when I was around 10 years old, uh, mm-hmm. I was listening to... <laughs> the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> sure. I really like those guys from Scotland. Um, always been a British fan, British music fan. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I really, I really like them. I used to watch American Bandstand when I was younger. Sure. Um, so you know the disco era and into like the Bee Gees and then you know rock. Um, really like you know uh, I used to listen to what's called classic rock now. Um, Mm -hmm. but I used to listen to stuff like, uh, well, the Beatles, love the Beatles, uh, love Led Zeppelin, love, um, you know, uh, Boston, a lot of bands like that. Um, so Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I was raised on rock and roll, not trying to coin a a song or anything, but I was raised on rock and roll. And as I, as I, you know, grew older and, um, as a teenager, late teens, and then into college, um, I went to art school in downtown Chicago I'm from the Chicago area. And mm-hmm. I, uh, went to art school right in the heart of downtown in the loop, right on, uh, in the sun times building, right off of Wabash and the river. Sure. And so it was like right in the heart, in the middle. And, uh, there was everywhere you looked and everywhere you walked, there was art, music, creativity bursting at the seams. And I wore, uh, you know, it's funny. I wore black every day, like an artist, but I, my, my color was in front of me as opposed to, I didn't really wear colorful things at the time. You, so mm-hmm. you were like, when you're in Chicago, you're like a city rat and you're like running yeah. around the city, you know, in black. And, you know, I, I loved it. I love Chicago. Um, so my influence changed a lot. Um, it wasn't just rock. It, it, you know, I started getting into, since it was in the mid eighties, it was, I was into new wave. I was into like the cure, Depeche mode, um, modern English. Um, I, in midnight oil, I went to, you know, I was very, very blessed to see them in, in concert during their heyday. And, you know, the, the different little clubs that were around the city. So, as my as I was growing older and my taste evolved, um, then I moved to Florida, and then there was dance music, there was R and B, there was jazz. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, I really got into you know like Richard Elliott and uh, Basha, and you know, and then New Wave, Enya, and, and just all of this or New Age. Um, so, and I love classical music. So I used to go to a lot of when I lived in um, Orlando. I used to go see the see opera a lot, uh, live opera. And, 
luckily they had the super titles, you know, advertising what they were singing in other languages, but I love classical music too. So I'm like, wow, you know, I love this. I love that. I love yeah. that. And then started, um, you know, eventually moved here to Phoenix and, uh, 25 years ago. And, uh, it just, I, you know, I, I was shooting, sh started shooting, um, pictures. Uh, I'm a photographer. So I started shooting photos of bands. Um, the first one I shot professionally was in LA at, uh, the Viper room. And that was Richie Kotzen, mm -hmm. former guitarist for Poison. Oh, the original, okay. the original wow. guitarist. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So I, um, you know, I had, I have friends out there. So yeah. So that was, that was great, you know, and, uh, it, it, I caught, I caught the bug because yeah. I was already a photographer when I went to school, when I went to art school, I was already a photographer, uh, black and white architectural photography that evolved into model. I was a model and I, I started shooting model and fashion photography. And then when I moved here, I, um, I, I took my love of music. I've been to a lot of concerts, believe it or not. I've been to over 760 concerts so far. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, people ask, well, how do you even know that? Well, I had a, a boyfriend years ago who loved Excel spreadsheets. He put together a spreadsheet for uh, me. <laughs> a concert spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and, but that was yeah, many years ago. And, and ever since then, I've been keeping count because, you know, I think at that time might have been 350. So since then, wow. it's been quite a while since we dated. But ever since then, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I've been to this many concerts. That's not as many artists. I've been to multiple, you know, I've seen yeah. some artists multiple times. But yeah, so mm -hmm. I've been, you know, I just, I took my hobby as a concert goer and turned it into, a professional career as a uh, concert music journalist. So I actually do the writing of the concerts that I shoot and I publish it on my website. And that kind of brings me to today and what I'm doing today, which I'm in a band now. So mm. I'm the lead singer of a band. It's a, it's a rock cover band here in town called Broken Halo. And, you know, I mean, I know a lot about music. I don't profess to know everything. Um, I, but I have a wide variety and diverse background in music as far as what I've been exposed to, what I've yeah. liked. Um, and it's just a natural thing that this is, I've evolved into this. I didn't, never thought I would, but I, I've actually dreamed right. about it many times. <laughs> well, what was that first concert? The first one that you, the first, let's just say the first big concert that you attended what what was that do you remember I, which one that was of course i remember that uh it was acdc's for those about to rock tour in um 1980 oh. 1980 in chicago at the rosemont horizon i don't remember who wow. opened for them but that's who it was and that was brian johnson uh first, Bob yeah. Scott had already passed but right. yeah 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 so i mean it was exciting i loved angus young i had a poster you know of ACDC <laughs> on my bedroom wall. My mom didn't like it, but you know, whatever. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's 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 funny because I never realized that we kind of followed the same path for a long time. I was born and raised in Chicago. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. very familiar with the with the arts and the uh, everything downtown. Uh, certainly in the heart of the city. And then I moved myself. I moved to Florida uh, for a period of time. And then I moved back to Chicago and then moved out here to Arizona. So, oh, wow. yeah, we kind of we kind of followed the same path for quite <laughs> some time. But um, I saw ACDC with Bon Scott. Oh, um, cool. Back in the day. And that was in cool. Chicago at uh, Comiskey Park. Oh, wow. Uh, at, the original you know, the Sox, Comiskey. Yeah. yeah. So Sox Field, <laughs> um, Sox Park. Wow. And it was it was it was quite a lineup, too. It was. The opening act was the Walter Egan group. They came out, they had one song out, Magnet and Steel. <laughs> yeah. If you heard the song, you would probably know it. What's but the song? Uh, uh Magnet and Steel. I, I, I know that song. Of course yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. And they, they did that one. <laughs> After that, uh, it was Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. Okay. So 
that goes back quite a ways. I've and heard of then, that. then ACDC with uh, Bon Scott and, you know, little Angus Young came right out in front of us. We were on the field. <laughs> he came right out in front of us jamming. Uh, and then the next act was Foreigner. Okay. So the original, the original Foreigner, uh, they had just come out with a double vision album. And then the main act was Aerosmith. And wow. they had so just come was, out with what Draw the Line. That? What year was that, that? Oh, that had to be early 70s, 76 maybe. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's it was cool. in the 70s. It was crazy. That's, that's Yeah, cool. I'm pretty sure it was about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. So we did kind of follow the same thing. So ACDC was your, was your first group. Uh, yes. What was your initial impression when you first one, one, when you saw them, because Angus obviously runs around like crazy and does his thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but Brian Johnson, uh, you know, his voice, obviously a lot different from all the other voices that came out. What was your first initial impression of of that band when you saw them well they were my favorite band at the time so i was so excited to be there i was like excited to see mm. them i had a con i bought a jersey <laughs> um and oh. back when they were affordable <laughs> and <laughs> right i remember them starting out this the uh the show with fire you know explosions mm. explosions yeah. and you know pyrotechnics and and right. um it, it you know it it was just amazing they were great they were fabulous and mm. i mean i don't i just didn't want it to end and yeah angus young in his little schoolboy outfit yeah you know just going back and forth on the stage yeah right. he's awesome now with that at at that point when you were there were you already into photography or not yet I, you know, I, my, my father had a little point and shoot, like a little Kodak camera mm -hmm. that you mount the, <laughs> you mount the little light bulb oh, on the there. the flash bulbs on, yeah. Yeah, the flash bulb. And, and I used to kind of toy around with it, but I never, no, I never, yeah. I don't think I was really quite into photography yet. Mm. Um, that came actually during college, my first year in college mm. in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was so like now, four, four and, years later, five years later. <laughs> oh, all right. So yeah. then with, with that, were you thinking about like how I could kind of mix photography with my love of photography, love of music, uh, and, and put that together now, again, all without being a musician, just at this point, being a fan is, was that seemed like the ultimate thing that you wanted to do at that point? No, I never thought about it. Really? Not until mm -hmm. later, like I said, um, when I was when I was first, you know, um, introducing uh, myself, I basically I went to art school to learn art and how to draw and paint with my hands. And as a mate, that was my major. My minor was in photography while my friends during mm -hmm. lunch break would go. You know, we would all hang out together. They had their sketchbooks with them and they'd start drawing people in the plaza or walking around on Michigan Avenue. Yeah. I had a camera in my hand instead, mm. although I was an illustration major, but that was more natural to me to mm. have a camera. So I had an, an old manual camera and, and I had black and white film and I just fell in love with the architecture of Chicago. And I started seeing it in a different mm. way as an artist. I didn't see the building, I saw parts of the building and I'd shoot parts of the building and like the reflection of it and just had a field day. And that's what we would do. We didn't even eat lunch. We would go and we would do our art and, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, and, and I, uh, until after I moved to, um, after Chicago and after getting tired of the winters and everything, I moved to Florida. That's when I started, um, you know, after I did my modeling and all that, moved from South Florida to Orlando. When I was in Orlando, I became best friends with a, with a gentleman who was a graduate of RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, as a photography major. And hmm. we, he started, you know, when we'd go out, uh, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, he'd bring his camera. He'd say, you want to shoot some pictures? And I'm like, of course. So I started shooting around Orlando, the parks and people and 
stores and like mm. editorial photography, black and white. And yeah. then I said, you know what, this is, this is, I already had a minor in photography. I'm like, you know, this is something I really love. And so I started a business out there called Handsome Prince Photography. And I had that for, mm. I did that for five years before I moved here when my mom became ill and I moved here and, um, uh, you know, just kind of uprooted my life to move here. No one asked me to. I just thought, you know, this is the right thing to do. And I'm glad I did it. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came here and started attending concerts and then doing some shows at Belo's in um, Tempe off of Mill Avenue. Um, I used to uh, write uh, or I used to do hand color uh, black and white photographs. So I had small little photographs like four, four by five, five by seven. And mm -hmm. they were printed and I had color, I had a uh, Marshall, um, Marshall paints with me that are for, for photos. And I used to just take little tiny brushes and I used to hand color them, mm -hmm. um, parts of them. And people used to, I used to do that at Belo's and people used to stop and ask me, what are you doing? And they were like really <laughs> interested. And then I used to, you know, while I was there doing my art, there were bands that came to play every night. Oh. And I was there about three nights a week. I used to go down there three nights a week and set up my table and have my paints with me and my, my photos. And I just started meeting bands, like local bands. And, yeah. um, and then they started asking me to take photos. And then I, so that's how it evolved. And then, mm. and then Coachella, I've always wanted to go to a desert rave. Ever since I was in Florida, I heard about these raves. And yeah. And uh, finally had a chance to go to Coachella for the first time. I've been 14 years in a row. Um, the first time I was like, <clears throat> oh, my God, this is awesome. It's so much mm -hmm. fun. And then as I kept going, uh, I, I thought, you know, I want to do concert photography. I want to take some of these photos. I don't want to just yeah. be here and dance. I want to I want to be part of that. Sure. And. And I, I, um, I did some research on the internet for, um, you know, I did try with local or, or, U, or U.S. based um, magazines like Spin and Rolling Stone, which, you know, yeah. you got to know somebody really to get into those. So I oh, thought, yeah. you know, these European, these European uh, magazines may need somebody to cover Coachella for them. So that's what I did. Yeah. I found one in Amsterdam called 365 Mag. Uh, they were uh, primarily um, EDM, electronic dance music based, mm -hmm. which I like, I love actually. Um, but I said, hey, you know, I never spoke with the editors and the publishers, these great young guys, I never did, but we always talked on instant messenger on Facebook or mm -hmm. uh, in email. And I was awake. I'm a night owl. I was awake in the morning when they were just waking up. So oh, okay. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, yeah. It worked out really well for our schedules. And so I would say, hey, Eric, you know, um, do you need, um, I'd love to go and, you know, I'd love to uh, represent 365 Mag and go cover Coachella for you. And it was at the time it was a renowned magazine, online magazine. And uh, he said, yes, of course. So he goes, hey, he goes, it's, he goes, would you be open to writing a review, a story about it? And I'm like, absolutely. So I didn't just, he didn't just send me out there to shoot the concert, the, yeah. the festival, the three day festival. He said, you know, let's, let's, let's do a write up so we can publish it on our magazine and in mm -hmm. our online magazine. I'm like, great. And I got accepted. Um, because they had a following because that's really what it takes. You have to have a following. Yeah. Um, and I got free tickets to go. And, and that was the first time I ever wrote a review was in 2010 during the Icelandic <laughs> volcano eruption. Um, <laughs> and, and as a matter of fact, that's kind of what I based my writing about because not all the bands that were slated to, to come and perform could make it mm -hmm. because they were coming from Europe and all parts of the world, oh. but the flights were canceled because of this volcano. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, 
So hmm. yeah, so I, I actually wrote about that too in my in my review. <laughs> well, you you brought up this is funny. I started thinking about something when you were talking about photography. Uh, you know, back in the day of shooting. So I, I got to ask you a photography question. So sure. back in the day, uh, uh, you were probably uh, loading rolls of film and bringing them to your uh, photo mat or some kind of a, of a place to get them developed. Or were you developing film at the time? No, here's, my, well, I can't say I never... I never developed any of my film. I, I took darkroom classes where I had my film and I learned how to, you know, play with darkroom um, fluids. <laughs> um, so that was fun. I used to do that. But um, for the most part, when I wasn't in school, I was shooting them myself and I wasn't, I didn't have that stuff at home. I didn't, we didn't have a place set up where I could mm -hmm. do that at home. Um, at the time I was going to college, I lived with, you know, still lived with my parents. So we had a small home, but, um, but yeah, no, that, that wasn't something I wanted to do at home. It's a little messy. Mm -hmm. It's flammable. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, but you still had to get it done for, on the outside. Yeah. You had to, it, yeah, no, it, I because took it to the store, I took it to yeah. the store, like a professional, a professional place. Yeah. I, Back then, Walgreens didn't offer it. You know, this is way before that. Um, so right. you had to take it to a professional place to get it done. Yeah. I had and, to take it and, to Chicago a lot. Yeah. Well, that and that yeah. was one of the things I, I had actually worked at one of those when I was in Chicago for a short period of time. But oh, did you? When I, when I was a kid and it was crazy to see some of the, you know, the way they developed the, the photography, printed them <laughs> out, matted them on sheets and stuff. But I wanted to ask just as a photographer. We, they've now moved into digital photography, of course. Oh, yeah. So, Many years but the ago. photos that I would see from back in the day before all of that happened seem to, to look so much cooler the way that they were developed or the way that they, they were. What is your take on the old style of photography, you know, with the old Canon camera or whatever it was that you'd be using at the time? Nikon. <laughs> the Nikon or, yeah. <laughs> and then going into digital, what was your, what is your preference? Um, well, I, I prefer digital only because you can, you can, um, you can delete them yeah. before you process them. Um, it's quicker. Um, there's more bells and whistles on cameras anymore. There's, somewhat better lenses. Um, I still have film in my crisper in my refrigerator. I don't know if it's still good, but <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah. Um, and wow. I, I have a two by four uh, or two and a quarter um, midsize uh, uh, camera that's got a bellows lens in the back. Um, it's, it's great for architecture, mm. but it's hard to look around. It's steel and glass. And it's oh. really heavy, but I still have that. Uh, I have film. I mean, you can still buy film. There's still places online where they process film. And I think even Tempe Camera does mm -hmm. it still. I like Tempe Camera a lot. Um, oh, okay. They still have it. Okay, yeah. Good. I mean, equipment's yeah. gotten a lot more expensive. So, oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. I would love to upgrade, yeah, my camera. Um, yeah. But that camera might... My, uh, it's an oldie, but a goodie. I call it an oldie now. It's a, a Nikon D300, even though I saw my Nikon N90S, which was the first professional camera I ever had. Um, that's a film camera. Um, mm. the D300, you know, I, I honestly think it's fine for what I do photography wise, although I would love to have the, the best, you know, mirrorless camera they have out now that's like 2,500 bucks without the lenses. But um, mm. I've got some really killer lenses that I've purchased throughout the years or that I have I've had throughout the years. And yeah. um, you're you know, honestly, cameras are the main body part is one thing. But it, if you have a, a, a mega lens on there, it changes the whole um, possibilities of being creative yeah. and capturing different photos. And I have some great lenses, so it's not obsolete in any way. But mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know how many festivals I have shot with that. I'd have to think about that one. I know I've probably hmm. shot Coachella. Coachella I've shot professionally six times. Austin City Limits twice. Lollapalooza four times. Oh. And Vans Warp Tour twice. Oh, okay. And little and smaller ones, you know that. Yeah. You know, some aren't aren't in existence anymore. But yeah, I those are like the major ones, and they're it's it's grunt work. But you know, you gotta love what you're doing, or else you don't do it. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. for sure. Well, now, do you oh, do you okay. offer those services through gig shots? Do you offer those services to bands? that are willing to to hire you on for just you know some of their shows if they just want a, a photo shoot or a promo pack or anything yeah. like that do you do any of that for local bands i do i'm very blessed to be able to do that and have a, a really Good. nice network of of uh musicians that i know and that i've i've taken photos of even written reviews interviewed mm -hmm. uh, and published on my website yeah, I, I, I love doing that. And that's how I started being, you know, becoming it, it, and, you know, getting this band together. It was with people that I've taken photos of in the past. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so now that brings us up to the start of becoming a musician. When, yeah. when did that transition take place? What was the transition that you said, I need to start writing lyrics or I need to start singing in a band? How did that even come about? Actually, I've been writing lyrics ever since I was a kid. I didn't even know they were lyrics. They were, it was more like, more like poetry. So I've always, mm. I've always like written um, from my heart uh, and I've kept some of the work that I've done. Uh, but as I grew older, I would say probably... When, not until I moved to Arizona, uh, again, was about 25 years ago, um, just during my, like the weekends and being so inspired by music in my life anyway, I just mm -hmm. started writing, you know, either maybe it was a breakup and I wanted to write my feelings out. I missed someone, um, a death in the family, a pet, uh, or just... You know, it, it just uh, it's just an emotion that I wanted to, to get down in, in words. Mm -hmm. um, I don't write the music, but I do have a melody usually in my head um, mm -hmm. when I when I write the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I started really, really writing a lot and more like on a regular basis during COVID. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I wrote some really, I got some really cool stuff, I think. Um, I've got. I, I met with some people that, you know, were, weren't afraid to meet and get, get together because of this, you know, virus that was out there. Um, yeah. And a person had asked me, um, cause, cause he was mainly into like heavy metal, metal rock, all of that. And, uh, and he, I, I also believe he was, he was putting some music together for a, a horror movie. <laughs> oh. So it had to be dark. And he asked yeah. me because because I let him read some of the lyrics I had and I wanted to get his opinion. And uh, he had some really nice things to say. So uh, anyway, but one of the things cool. he did tell me, um, because I like to put a positive spin on a lot of my music, mm -hmm. uh, he, he asked me if I ever thought about writing in more of a dark, dark way, like coming from a dark place. So. I said, you know, I haven't really, but I, but I think that would be a, a good stretch for my imagination and creativity to try it. And um, not long after that, I was sitting in, I was, I was with, I was living uh, with my parents because I was taking care of them, helping, you know, during their final years of their lives. And I was in the bedroom. I had a really small room and I was sitting actually in the dark and because I don't know about you being a creative person yourself, but when I am not distracted and I have just blank in front of me, that's when all of my creativity comes in yeah. and um, no distractions basically. And yeah. um, 
I started thinking that, so don't, 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 I mean, you all, I mean, you're an artist. I doubt that you're going to take this the wrong way, but this is what happened. I, in order to, to write that way, I had to become something. I had mm -hmm. to hone into a dark place and I did. So what I started as, you know, first of all, I had to think about what am I going to write about? What's the song going to be about? Yeah. And I wanted, it, it, what came to me was being a, a, a woman being abused. So I came from the perspective of the, and it was a man abusing the woman. I, came, I wrote in a perspective of the man abusing the woman. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing some things visually that scared me. It oh, yeah. scared me. I mean, I started, I mean, you know, I believe in heaven now. I started seeing something that I didn't want to see. Yeah. And it scared me and I had to stop because oh. my creativity was taking over. Right. My mind was taking over like it does when I write other lyrics, but I don't usually do it from a perspective like that. Yeah. I wanted to try it because I thought this would be a great uh, exercise for me. And I want to learn. I want to use all my the creativity I can. And that's while it's something I know I can do, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. but it shows how wildly creative the mind can be Absolutely. because it can take Absolutely. you to those dark places and it can take you to those areas that Absolutely. you don't want to go. So, it, you know, good. Yeah, it's that's not, great. it's but, not for everybody. I'm not right. like, you know, Oh, everything is, you know, uh, through rose colored glasses. Right. Uh, I am a more positive person, you know, but, uh, I can still write yeah. from, you know, write about abuse. I just don't want to be the person abusing, you know, like I don't want to be writing about sure. I'm the one abusing you. Cause I mean, I got, it was pretty, pretty dark. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So yeah. then musically you decided that you wanted to, to start singing and yes. what were your influences when it comes to the singing that although you may have your own original voice, what are you kind of basing it from your range and all that other stuff that you do? Uh, where did that come from? Um, you know, I again, I, I'm influenced by a lot of music. Um, depending on what I'm writing, I'm going to, or what I've done so far is I've thought about a certain artist that I like, mm -hmm. musician, uh, singer. Uh, one of the songs that I have, I'm actually really proud of. I mean, it's not a song yet. It's a it's lyric it's a set of lyrics but yeah. i kind of have a melody in my mind um so i guess it is a song it just hasn't been recorded yet music mm -hmm. hasn't been put to it yet but um shania twain it's a it's a country rock song believe it or not and oh, okay. it's it's very it's bubbly it's it's upbeat it's sassy um yeah. and i really like i mean it's not a ripoff by any means or plagiarism it's more like that's the influence Sure. of this song uh one of the songs that she sings any man of mine um it's it started sounding like it it's not like i listened to it while i was writing but it started mm -hmm. sounding like that song yeah okay um and then um i've got some other songs that were uh influenced by the band muse so it's more like a progressive rock song um mm -hmm. and then um you know so i've got I've got a bunch of just different, different uh, sounding so just yeah. songs that came from different places. But when I sing, I really love Karen Carpenter. I love her voice. Sure. I have a deeper voice yeah, for a woman, a mezzo soprano uh, singing voice, and uh, she's a con was a contralto. But I, I could sing. I, I mean, I'm not her. I don't pretend to be her. Never will even say that I'm her. Mm -hmm. But I would love to do a, a Carpenter's tribute band. I, I would just, oh, I'd yeah. be in like heaven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like her. I like her a lot. I think she's the, the best singer I've ever heard. Oh, definitely. A, a unique voice, but mm -hmm. a real smooth voice. Yeah. I, yes. I, I will tell you. She is unfairly, and I won't say hated, um, 
She is, I don't know if you remember this or not, but you said you were a Led Zeppelin fan. Back in the day, uh, there was a poll, I think in Rolling Stones for the best drummers. And Karen Carpenter beat out John Bonham. <laughs> and that caused like, <laughs> obviously Bonham got a little upset. Um, oh, and I'm sure Zeppelin fans did too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Zeppelin fans will look at like Karen Carpenter and be like, ah, she was okay. She was a good singer, but not a drummer. She didn't beat John Bonham. So it was always funny to always hear that type of thing going on <laughs> and how, you know, how Bonham wasn't that happy about the fact that he was edged out of first place by, uh, by Karen Carpenter. So I had, was, you know, I didn't know that I didn't, yeah. but I know about, about Rolling Stone magazine's controversial polls that they do every year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And this, this, it was, it was pretty funny when it happened. It happened a long time ago, obviously, but it was but pretty it was, funny when you it know, happened. They're both great drummers, but you know, they're yeah. very different, very different. Right. Yeah. So then From what, other. what is next? What is next for you? What are you looking at uh, when it comes to music? You're looking at getting your band together. I know that. Um, was there something that you want to do that you have not done yet? Well, we, we want to start playing out uh, and entertaining people other than, you know, learning our set list and, and uh, rehearsing, which, mm -hmm. of course, one must do before you go out and oh, sure. uh, and perform. So that would be like the next uh, the next step. But um, uh, I still have my my photography career. It still centers around music and I'm mm -hmm. still very blessed to go and shoot bands, local bands, um, do their band promos, do their live concert um, shows, write a review if they need it, a uh, biography, um, or, you know, also uh, interview them because I do have those interview skills and, I, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just blessed that I can do so many different things. Um, <clears throat> but I also, you know what, I really, really, really want to do that Carpenter's Tribute that I haven't done yet. So, well, you put your mind things, to it. I know you'll get it done and I know it'll be <laughs> successful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I learned how to publish my own work on gigshots.net and that was a big deal for me. I'm not a graphic designer or a web administrator and I, I learned mm -hmm. how to do that. I, I'm learning, I, I'm just learning how to, be a better artist and music, you know, I want to yeah. learn the piano. Um, you know, if the, the Carpenter's Tribute, uh, that would be a great thing to, to have, to know, uh, yeah. and to, you know, to play with my keys, my keyboard. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I think all things in time, I think it's right around the corner. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we certainly wish you all the best. And that is amazing how quickly the time goes by. We're talking about stuff and I'm looking up and I'm like, wow, it's already, you know, the time has already passed. I can't believe we went through that whole thing. Yeah. I it seems like it's it. been only a couple of minutes. Um, I know. Well, yeah, I know. I, I like, I do talk a lot. But <laughs> oh, no, that's why we got a lot of information. That, that's what matters. It's, it's all about learning about you and learning about what you can do. But let let everybody know before we go. Let everybody know where they can get a hold of you, what social media you're on, and if they do need anything photography wise or booking bands or whatever it might be for you, let them know where they can get a hold of you. Oh, great! Thank you, Anton. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would love if I if I haven't worked with you yet. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to work with you. Uh, even if I have worked with you, I'd love to work with you again. Um, you can find me at my my website, which is gigshots.net, G-I-G-S-H-O-T-S.net, or uh, I'm on Facebook, Carmen Garza, C-A-R-M-E-N-G-A-R-Z-A, -E -A -A, or Gig Shots. I have a profile um, uh, specifically for Gig Shots, and that's spelled G-I-G-S-H-O-T-S, -S, exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Uh, or on Instagram, I am Carmen at gig shots. Now that's not an at sign. It is the word at Carmen at gig shots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining <laughs> us. 
Uh, another episode of Living in the Limelight podcast. Appreciate you being here. Uh, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, really, the I'm sure whatever you come up with, you're going to do. So congratulations Thank on you. everything you've done so far and uh, and what you're going to accomplish. And with that, it's another episode of Living in the Limelight. I'm your host, Anton Scholl. Please check out Carmen uh, on all of the different sites that she mentioned and gig shots and take a look at them and some of those reviews because those reviews were pretty cool. Uh, even oh, as, I think you just did a Rick Springfield one, by the way. Um, I, I did Springfield. I just I just posted the band The Thing, which they're uh, up and coming out of New York that, City. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's the one I did on my own, which I was like, I'm so proud. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll I, have had everybody... good, I had good trainers. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we'll have everybody check that out too. Once again, thank you, Carmen, for joining us. And uh, we hope to do this again when your band comes out and starts playing around. We'll get you back on and uh, and we'll start promoting that as well. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you so much yeah. for your time, Anton. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. For everybody else, please look us up living in the limelight uh, on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, uh, on, I mean, just everywhere, all your social media sites, please look us up and uh, we will talk to you again very soon. Thank you. Thank you for joining our Living in the Limelight podcast with your host, Anton Scholl. Please feel free to comment, like, follow, share, and subscribe, and also add us to your playlist on your favorite streaming sites. Thanks again for joining, and we'll talk to you again next week.